if you're on a really small data team or you're the only engineer at the whole company, it's really easy to feel like you can just look past certain workflow things. It might feel like it's more work than necessary just because of how small the team is. And in particular, I noticed this happens quite a bit in the area of version control. But in my opinion, this is actually a critical error and it's something that should be taken seriously whether you are a one person data team or a 100 person team. So in this video, I wanna talk through some of the common pitfalls I see small teams making with version control and some reasons why you might wanna consider taking it more seriously if you haven't already. So topic number one here is that I believe that there's a difference between having a Git project and then following a Git workflow. And again, this is something that I see happening with a lot of the smaller teams. And the way that this tends to play out is you might have your code, maybe it's some SQL queries or some project information that's technically backed up on a version control platform. So it's more just like a historical reference of the code, which is good, but you're not going through the process of creating branches during development of merging code of making commits of having commit statements all these different things that go along with the git process it's more of just like a backup and saving the file and while it's a great first step to at least set up that version control you're really missing out on a lot of the functionality and a lot of the options that you get with a version control platform and i think more importantly it helps to formalize your development process as a team and that's really what this is all about this whole video and this topic helping you get formalized helping you have a structure and having something repeatable that you can help pass on to somebody else or just expand your operations as your own team. There's definitely different reasons for why teams might not be using version control in the most optimal way. Sometimes it's just a matter of a lack of education or experience using that type of tooling. And this is understandable. I know for me personally, when I first got into data engineering and started working on teams, this idea of version control and automation and environments, it was all a little confusing at first. It really wasn't until I got on a team where we were actively using it every day that it really started to click. And now it's at the point where I can't imagine working on a team or even if I'm building my own thing personally to not use version control this way. And honestly, I think it's very similar to a lot of other habits in the sense of you have to practice and you have to actively use it consistently. Otherwise, it just becomes easier to put it off. Then over time, it becomes harder to pick it back up. But that's why I always recommend teams start using version control no matter how big or small the team is. It's worth it. There's so many benefits. With that in mind, let me now talk about some of those benefits that you get from using a real version control process, this workflow, not just backing up code. As I talked about a little bit before, number one, you're gonna have some structure in terms of your development process. You have a system in place, so you know exactly what somebody has to do to develop code. They create a branch, they commit changes, they push their code up, they have reviews, and you have this whole process. Number two, it can increase the efficiency of your team because you'll have automation in place. A lot of times I see when teams aren't using version control to its full potential, they're doing a lot of manual things. That could include manual testing, manual deployments, things like that where it could very well be automated through a version control platform if you just better understood how to use it and how to actually incorporate it into your workflow. And then a third note on this is things are just going to stay a lot cleaner in your process, not just the code itself. Obviously, you'll have the version control, the review process and all of that stuff but the documentation of what changes happened will be cleaner as well. And this makes it a lot easier for other people to understand what's going on. Rather than just having a bunch of files there as a backup, you can instead start to track and have documentation of individual changes throughout history. And that's really important, especially for when your time comes that you're no longer working at the company or the team expands, again, all those situations. Then on the other side of that, if you actually do follow the process of creating merge requests or pull requests, depending on the platform, and have a template for the changes coming through, you can go back again, look through history of the different batches of changes that came through, who approved it, some of the conversation around it, and it becomes more structured, more clear, rather than being scattered through all sorts of channels and all different parts of code. It's just a more efficient way to do it. Now I wanna leave you here with some tips or just thoughts around how you could potentially better use version control, whether you're using it today and want to improve it, or if you're completely new to it and you want to make sure you're doing it right from the start one is to be committing your changes to your development branch early and often. This is something I learned early in my experience with version control platforms. And the reason for doing this is that again, kind of like I mentioned earlier, it allows you to individually monitor specific changes and you can track them. And each commit has a message. So, you know, little things that are happening. And if you do it in smaller chunks, smaller commits, it becomes easier to then potentially, if you ever need to, roll back some things. You can pick out individual snippets of code. As opposed to what I do see a lot of teams do, even though they're sort of following the process, they'll make a bunch of changes and wait until the very end to do one really large commit to the branch and then move it along. And I understand that this might feel like you're doing the right thing and you're saving yourself some problems and you don't want to maybe commit because you're worried about 
um, you know, committing to that change. But the reality is you're probably going to make it harder on yourself in the future if your commits are really big and more little nuances are going to slip through the cracks. It's easier to look through smaller changes than it is to try to look at one big change and try to figure out what happened. So just general rule of thumb, commit early and often. Don't be scared to commit changes to the branch as you develop, make it part of the process. Another thing I mentioned earlier that I recommend here is to take advantage of automations within a lot of these tools. You can set up some pretty solid automations to deploy your code, test your code, create documentation. And there's a lot of other things you can probably do a lot easier now with just AI that can add to your workflows and automate a lot of this process and really just take advantage of it. And a lot of this stuff is right out of the box for you. You just have to understand where to look and how to do it. Another tip here is to look at adding a template for your pull or merge requests. And that helps allow all of your requests and your documentation to have a consistent look and feel. It makes reviews easier. It just keeps you on track, keeps you honest. And again, overall allows for consistency without adding too much overhead because you have it templated. So it just pulls up for you every time you create it. And I find that this does help a little bit overcome the tendency for developers to add pretty much no documentation for their changes or just leave it blank. So at the very least, you recognize that you are deleting a template to put nothing, but a lot of times it does encourage people to add at least a little bit of documentation and the template just makes that process a little less painful to do. And lastly, kind of on a similar note as before is you can add rules around your merge request process. For example, you might make it a requirement or a rule that you have to have at least one approval from somebody else before you can merge the code or all the automation checks have to pass before the merge button is activated for you to actually push your code through. So it's a really helpful setting you can add in pretty much any of the version control platforms that again, just keeps you honest and make sure your structure is in place. And I think it's helpful regardless of the size of your team. So as I mentioned at the beginning, workflow is a really important component for any data team, regardless if you're a one person team or you're a 100 person team. And hopefully this video helped give you some ideas on ways you can improve that or implement it from the start for your team. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next video.